Automation doesn't necessarily always mean repeatability. That was confusing. What do I mean by that? Well, let's just take an example. Let's say I write a Terraform configuration to deploy an Azure Kubernetes service or AKS cluster or any service, right? But we're just gonna say AKS because that's the demo that I'm gonna be showing. So it's easy to use that as an example. So let's say I'm writing some code and you know, on the command line, I can run Terraform init, uh, plan, apply, and it's all good. So I created an automated process to deploy an AKS cluster, but I did not make it repeatable. So what do I mean by making it repeatable? Well, what I mean is to make it truly repeatable, I would have to do something like put it in a pipeline. So maybe I would create a GitHub action. I would put the Terraform configuration in the pipeline to be deployed. That way it's truly repeatable. So I automated it by writing a code configuration to deploy a cluster, but then I made it repeatable by having a button click in GitHub Actions, for example, or any CI CD platform to destroy, approve, etc. So with that, let me head over to VS Code. I'm gonna show you how to get this done because it's a little bit quirky in terms of getting the authentication done. All right, now, first things first, you're gonna have to create a service principle via Active Directory. Now here, <laughs> It's kind of weird, all right? And I'm gonna show you what I mean here in just a second. But when you run this, you're gonna get an output and the output is gonna be in JSON. And you're gonna see things like the app secret, or I'm sorry, the client secret, the app ID, or the client ID, I keep saying app, sorry, subscription ID, et cetera, all right? Now, there are two methods, well, there are probably a few, but the two primary methods for authenticating via something like GitHub Actions, for example, is you can do an AZ login or you can set environment variables. Now, here's the thing. If you do an AZ login with the whole output, the JSON output that you would get from this command, what'll end up happening is this. You can authenticate to Azure, but if you, for example, wanna store your state in a storage account, well, that needs to be done via a user or a service principal with a secret. And even though that secret exists in the JSON output, if you have something like this, for example, you're gonna get a really weird error. Let me show you that error here really quick. So if I go to, should be one of these, let's say, right here. So you see how it says error building arm config authenticating using the Azure CLI. It's only supported by a user, not a service principal. This is a weird message because it's, technically not correct. Now, what do I mean by it's technically not correct? Well, if I go into actions and I showcase a secret, I have this cred secret here. And what does this contain? It contains the entire JSON output from the command that I was just showcasing. And that allows you to authenticate to Azure. But if you want to do something like, let me go back to VS Code here really quick. This it expects you to have this user or a secret from the service principal. Now, what does that amount to? It's kind of silly, <laughs> but it amounts to instead of putting it all in one config, which would make sense, uh, taking that whole JSON, putting it into a secret in itself, you got to split up the secret. So you got to say client ID, subscription ID, uh, uh, tenant ID, and secret. So you got to split it up. You got to say, client ID, client secret, tenant ID, subscription ID, instead of putting it all in one. Again, it's kind of quirky, but whatever, right? But you can use this command here. Next, I just have this, you know, Terraform configuration here. It's just to create an AKS cluster, right? And then what I have is I have two pipelines, one to apply and one to destroy, all right? Now, what I need to do here is I need to set these environment variables. So these environment variables that are gonna call upon four secrets that I set up, the client ID, the client secret, the subscription, and the tenant ID. I don't have to put these anywhere else, right? So as you can see, I have this commented out here because I was trying this earlier to just do a standard login with the credentials. And again, it did work. So I was able to create the cluster, but once I put in a backend configuration, so like this, it did not work. Again, for I'm not exactly sure 100% the reason the API needs a, a 
user or service principle that split up, I guess. Uh, but as soon as you put this in, that configuration right here, this does not work, right? So you have to split it up and it makes sense. You, you should really be doing that because you want to store the backend configuration. You want to store your TF state. That way the, the state obviously is stored somewhere. And if you want to create the repeatable process to destroy the cluster as well as create it, you're going to need that state somewhere. Otherwise it's not going to have anything to point to. All right. So let's go ahead and go through the pipeline here really quick. Now, I'm doing it on workflow dispatch. That way I can click a button permissions to read the configuration, the jobs. It's going to be a Terraform configuration. I'm specifying my environment variables to authenticate to Azure. It's running on an Ubuntu container and I'm just specifying a tag here for the environment. I'm going to run a shell command and these are the steps. I'm going to check out the code and this is going to be to actually do the deployment via the Terraform configuration right here. And then in a knit, format, plan, and apply. Now for the destroy, it's the same exact configuration. The only difference is it's a destroy instead of an apply. All right, so let's head back over to GitHub Actions really quick and we'll see this whole thing go. All right, so let me go to Actions here. I'm gonna zoom in, All right? I'm gonna go to AKS deployment and I'm gonna run the workflow here. All right, and this will probably take, I don't know. Uh, let's see, the last one that ran was, uh, five minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause. I'll be back in five. All right. And as we can see that finished successfully five minutes and 41 seconds, and we could just literally confirm this, go to Azure and we can see our cluster here. Now, what about destroying it? Well, let's give that a shot. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to run our workflow and then Yep, we're gonna pause again <laughs> for a couple of minutes. Uh, this one looks like it takes about three minutes or so. And as you can see, that finished successfully. If we go over and do a refresh here, our cluster is gone. So that's how you can create your own button to deploy and delete an AKS cluster or really any other Terraform resource that you decide to put into your main TF configuration utilizing GitHub Actions. Thanks so much for watching.